Okay, so we saw that these grains are a sort of type of imperfection. Um, but even within those grains, there are going to be defects. These imperfections or defects, I'll go back and forth with the term I use, are always, always present. There's never a time we don't have them. And interestingly enough, many of the properties we care about are sensitive to the presence of imperfections. Okay, they are connected. Like I said earlier, um, chemical reactivity happens is a lot higher along those grain boundaries. It'll be the same with any of these imperfections we see. Now, one way to determine these crystalline defects is to say it's a lattice irregularity. And it's typically on the order of an atomic diameter. So what kind of crystalline imperfections exist in solids? Now, if you're really confused by this, we're going to show a picture of it soon. So don't worry about this kind of fancy term here. Now, there are various ones. There are what are called zero-dimensional point defects. That's a vacancy where we're missing an atom. An interstitial atom where we have an atom that's in between when it shouldn't be there. So maybe it's a simple cubic, but I have a really, really tiny atom that fits in the middle. And finally, a substitutional impurity atom where I have atoms, but then I suddenly have a different atom that's there that shouldn't be. I have dislocations. And finally, grain boundaries, which are my two-dimensional defects. Dislocations we're going to get to later. We're going to focus on these vacancies, interstitial atoms, um, and impurity atoms first. We're just going to go in this direction. So I'm not going to focus much on the dislocations and grain boundaries right now. Okay, now let's look at vacancies. So vacancies are simply a vacant atomic site. You're like, well, what happened? Where did that atom go? Well, it might just not have been there in the first place. These could have cooled in such a way that they didn't ever have an atom in that spot. Um, they're going to try to form perfect crystals, but it doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. And sometimes we're going to have that vacancy there. Also, if you look at the surface of an, you know, a metal, interestingly enough, atoms are popping off and coming back down all the time. Now, the more tightly bound something is, the less they'll pop off, you know, but it happens like with water. Water is constantly popping off and then coming back down over and over and over again. And really, it is only the pressure of other things that are knocking it down. So we are forming vacancies all the time. It's just a very, very slow process for metals, at least until we get to high temperatures. But the higher our temperature, the more vacancies form because metal atoms are popping off. Or they're moving. Maybe this vacancy is no longer here. It's over here. So vacancies can form and vacancies can move. Another way we can see this is, remember that if you increase the temperature of metal, what happens to its volume? Well, it goes from a block this size to a block, you know, that size. And where does that come from? We don't have suddenly more metal. And yes, part of that is because, you know, we're vibrating here. But another part of that is simply because vacancies are forming. As those vacancies form, the volume of our block increases. Because many times the atoms aren't necessarily falling off. They can, but... A lot of times they'll just move around to leave vacancies. Okay, the next option right here could be a self interstitial. It's where we have a regular atom. It's one of the atoms from your crystal, but it's in a place that it shouldn't be. Um, for smaller atoms, this might be okay. Like a hydrogen atom accidentally sticking inside of this. We'll just say these are carbon atoms. It wouldn't really cause all that much of an issue, but this is causing stress. Now you can see here that these planes are distorted both times. These planes are distorted. And that can be both good and bad. It just depends on our situation. And we're really gonna jump into how good or bad that will be in a little bit later chapters. Just remember here that this guy is pressing on all the atoms around them. And this one right here, they're all trying to press into this gap. Each of those is going to change how things work. Anyway, I'll go ahead and tell you this. If we're trying to shear this, like cut it, these self interstitials are going to resist that because they're in the way. If I'm trying to more or less push through all these atoms. I'm going to be able to cut through here, cut through here, and I'm going to ram into that atom. I didn't expect it. It's not supposed to be there. So these self interstitials can help that. That's a vast simplification, but it's good enough for now. 
Okay, so that's it for this time. Hopefully this helps you see the, uh, two types of different imperfections, and these are point defects. We had were vacancies, and we had self-interstitials, where we have an item that's not supposed to be there. So, thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.